Boys and girls. Oh, there it is. Boys and girls. Today's Monday. You know, we don't like Mondays. But the best thing about a Monday, we get out of work. We sit down and we speak to some of the fine talent on our local indie wrestling scene. And look who we have today. It's a return of uh, just a little different because we did it uh, face to face over in the back at the DK Wasteland. But today we're going to Skype it. This is Stirring the Pot with Don Kincaid and my very special guest. You know what? I don't do his intro any justice. This guy can do his intro uh, none like any other. Uh, please, sir. I, and I hate you for to introduce yourself, but please. Allow me to reintroduce myself. My name is Mr. Aim to Entertain, the crown prince of the Geekdom Kingdom, the leader of the Nerd Up Nation, and your favorite voice of TOS. I am Mr. Nathaniel P. Carr. Pleasure to meet you all. Yes. Excellent, my friend. Excellent. I could never say all of that. I was going to say uh, Mr. Aim to something and pretty much lead into it. Um, <laughs> uh, welcome back, sir. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Glad to be back. Uh, it's been so long. Uh, dude, it's been a minute, if you will. And now when I mentioned that we did a face to face, I'm talking like we're talking pre pandemic boys and girls. Uh, it's been a, a little while since we've talked to Mr. Carr personally on a, on a, on a stirring the pot, but, and I'm going to start right here. He did mention he's the voice of TOS right now. Test of strength wrestling out of East Hartford, Connecticut. Uh, that's my, that's my home base between PAPW and TOS. Those are my homes away from home. Uh, Mr. Carr, he's kind of stepped away from the wrestling. We're going to get into that. He's kind of stepped away from the wrestling, but he's, within the business, if you will. And uh, he commentates for TOS, and I'm sure a couple other things will also speak on that. Uh, my friend, uh, you on commentary, always money. Love hearing it. I love hearing, listening back to uh, when TOS releases their full event on their YouTube channel. You can catch it on YouTube, boys and girls. That's a strength. Uh, I love hearing uh, yourself. Uh, and now we have one Drew Kazoo. Uh, within the test of strength ranks, uh, previous, previously there was uh, one uh, <laughs> big peasy, if you will. Uh, I miss him on the on, on the the commentary. I would love to see and was, peasy and Drew doing commentary. Yes, that, That'd be really fun to watch. That would be a good one. Yes, uh, and, and I can hear <laughs> I can hear you guys from a distance when you get all excited and you're calling the action over at the booth. Uh, my goodness, and that's kind of where I'm where I want to start is uh, this transition that you've taken from wrestling to commentary uh, still within the business. It seems like you're having a lot of fun still. I am. And I think I was going to um, shout out to BST. They needed a uh, guest commentator uh, for one of their shows. And I said, sure. I was injured at the time. So I did it. It was just, just pre pandemic. And, um, Stepped in, did it. Uh, it was real fun. And um, did it a couple more times with them before their uh, main commentator guy came back. Shout out to that team. Uh, um, and then started doing it for TOS. Had a blast with Drew. Me and Drew just had really good chemistry off the rip. Um, and before Drew, I was working with um, Smokes. You know, <laughs> Julius Smokes. That was <laughs> hilarious. Uh, um, yeah, so... Definitely did not expect this type of thing, but um, yeah, it's fun. In the, it's fun doing commentary. I'm not gonna lie; I didn't think I was gonna like it. But um, plus, I never shut up anyway, right? So I'm getting a live <laughs> microphone. I get to enjoy it. <laughs> well, it, it kind of sets me aback just a smidge by hearing you say that uh, you didn't think you would enjoy it as much because uh, boys and girls at the shows, uh, myself personally. Um, I'm a quiet guy. I'm a little reserved. I'm a homebody, if you will. I'm not what you see at the show. So when I get to the shows, there's a little trigger that happens. Um, and, and Mr. Aim to Entertain, he's always on. <laughs> he's always on his game. He's very bright. He's very colorful. He's very boisterous, and uh, always at wrestling, having a great time. Never, uh, never one of these guys, you know, bringing the uh, action down, bringing the environment down. Always full of uh, high energy and whatnot. And quick with his uh, wits and his words as well. Um, 
so it kind of sets me back a little bit by saying you didn't think you would enjoy it because I was actually thinking the total opposite. I go, that's probably actually a very perfect scenario for one Mr. Entertain. Well, uh, Mr. Mr. Aim to entertain. <laughs> Sorry. You would you would think that, but this comes back to something we're probably gonna reach into a little later. Is you have high com- high competition. You have some guys who I just can't stand that they cheat. They do all this stuff. See, in my nature, I I just can't tolerate that. And, and I can't do anything about it. It's the same way you can't put your hands on a ref. I, as a commentator, can't put my hands on the talent. I, I can't touch them. I can't tell them, hey, hey, don't talk to that person that way. I can't, def- you know, defend the people I want to defend. And I can't defend the respect I have for this business by sitting behind a microphone. They get to get away with murder, and all I can do is point it out, and hopefully somebody else notices it. You know, so uh, I, it's a little, it's a little weird feeling to be back there. Yeah, um, doing this transition, being a performer, a wrestler, an athlete, you're on the commentators' booth now. You're behind that microphone, calling uh, the action, and like you said, you have to be a professional. You cannot get out of that, you know, that that area of where you're speaking, and kind of jump in and. Uh, justify for the good guys you know bring some justice for the good guys yeah. um so I mean, it's gotta I would be say I'm the biased man in the business <laughs> i don't hide it <laughs> when the comes out when dan the man comes out when the firm oh. who have been slowly changing my opinion of them lately um not much but they 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 they're, they definitely have a little you know a little soul there i hope they can continue showing um but you know I don't hide it. You heard me a commentary. I don't hide my opinions on anybody in that ring that steps in that ring. Good, bad, or indifferent. So, you know, Drew is way better at that than I am. (laughs) He's really good at being professional. I, on the other hand, am very opinionated. (laughs) Uh, It's got to be quite hard, though, as an athlete to, like, be able to really pull back those reins of not wanting to get in the ring and right the wrongs of what you're seeing in front of you. Which is weird because when I first started, I didn't wasn't an athlete like i mean look this is built by burger king like this is not <laughs> this is not a body built by the gym like not yet anyway i mean you know we can talk about that later but like this wasn't a body originally built like by the gym by working out by doing all that stuff it was going to um pw when i started that and they they pretty much you know molded an athlete out of me out of somehow i don't know how they did it but you know they, they found a competitor in there and now to go back to be injured um, during a match and then having to sit out for almost, you know, two years. Um, it's difficult. It's you, cause you want that. Not, I don't, bad choice of words is high, but cause you know, cocaine, Don Kincaid over here, but, uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but you know, it's, it's a true, it's true feeling of, you know, exuberance that I get from being in that ring that I want back. Like it's to compete with the best talents around. I think, and I, I say this, TOS is the best kept secret in professional wrestling. We have the top quality talent. We we have some of the best up and coming talent, some of the best, you know, vets in the history with the hard hitting Bobby Oceans and the Dan the Man. You know what I mean? You see these vets, and don't forget Slick Wagner Brown, who's pretty much an innovator of a wrestling style that no one was really doing until he started doing it. You know what I mean? So you have all that, and how can you sit in the background when you're looking at that, being a former competitor? Like, you, you have to urge to want to return. So, yes, it was difficult. It was difficult to, you know, watch all these great talents come up, start, get their start. I was there from the beginning of Ichiban. Um, I was there from the, you know, beginning of Jordan Rowe. That's another person. Anyway, uh, you know, I was, there, I was there for the, the performing... <laughs> <laughs> yes, I love that. Joey G, he's the man for that one. I loved it. Um, so you know, I was there for the forming of the firm. I was, you know, you know, I was there for you know the rise and fall of Jabroni. Um, I was there for who would have thought the rise of Ryan Frost, my hero, Frost? Like, what? Who saw that coming? <laughs> Nobody. But it happened, and I was there for it. So, I mean, you know, you see all these moments, you know, you know, 
it's, it's just it, it gets that little that itch back in you sometimes, you know. So mm-hmm. definitely, um, definitely a, a feeling, a whole long winded point of is you know you can't get that high anywhere else, but when you watch TOS and when you experience that moment in the ring. So. I, I want to sprinkle commentary. Uh, this transition between uh, competitor and uh, c- commentary and some of those names that you spoke of coming out of TOS. So we've kind of done the commentary a little bit. What's going on? Why the transition? You did mention injury. Is that something you can share with us, the fans? So um, during one of the training days, I took a Saido suplex um, from a uh, Elijah Six, which uh, I'm always going to have a, a, no matter how nice he becomes, I'm always going to have a middle finger in the air for him every once in a while because of this reason, <laughs> um, you know, but, you know, that's, that's, that's what we do. That's what we, we got to compete. This ain't, you know, this ain't bad way. Like, like um, a great wrestling set once. Um, <laughs> he, he hit me as he should have with an amazing Saito suplex. I um, just landed perfectly wrong. <laughs> like, Nothing, if I want to land a little bit to the left, if I, if I would have, you know, done this, I would have done that, nothing, just hurt a lot. I landed perfectly to tear uh, my um, my muscle from my shoulder to my bicep. Oh, shit. Um, when, they, when they checked that out, they found three, um, what's the one I'm for? Three discs that, is, what, that was uh, deflated in my neck. And six bone spurts in my back of my neck, and two in my well, four in the back, two in the front. When they did oh, the whole crap. chat, uh, pretty much anybody said, Car, you don't have a neck. <laughs> well, guess what? The doctor found it and it's messed up. So, <laughs> um, so literally, um, yeah, I, and then COVID happened, so I couldn't see an ER, I couldn't see a doctor, anything for months on end to the point where if my bone spurts fused together in the back of my neck, my shoulder muscle healed off the bone oh. so my shoulder was just couldn't carry any weight on it for almost two, a, half, a year and a half um i want to say about the beginning of 2021 i started realizing that i i got really bad depression it was just i can't wrestle no more this is my dream this is the beginning of everything i want to do in my life um you know i've always said i wanted to end up becoming the puerto rican paul Heyman. Um, so, <laughs> you no, know, the first step was getting in that ring. Um, and with all that stuff happening, um, I went through a depression. Luckily, I was blessed to meet a, a beautiful woman who was annoyingly optimistic. And um, she kept pushing me, pushing me, pushing me to just, just go to physical therapy, see what happens. You never know. At least your arm can move better. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, just, just try to go to the gym. Just try to do this. Just try to do that. Just see what happens. And, you know, I can say now uh, I got the news from the doctors. My shoulder's at 95% functionality again. My neck is around 89% functionality again. Um, I've been doing yoga, flex, you know, increasing the flexibility in my neck and my shoulder and my back. Um, and, you know, I, I didn't turn it all the way around. But you know, after year after year, it's it's a very positive motion forward. So mm. you know, I could have let it take me out permanently. It was definitely an injury that could have been checked off. Off as yep, I did this already, and I'm not coming back. <laughs> so, uh, well, first off, much love to your better half for giving you that little boost, because sometimes that we talk about support on this show all the time, my friend. Sometimes you just need that little push from a support system and, and, and any direction it comes from. So uh, much love to your better half for helping out uh, Mr. Carr to get him more right than he was. That's for sure, you know? Yeah. Um, and second off, now that you're coming, you, you're kind of around the corner from being 100% on both scenarios here. Who knows if that'll ever happen? naturally because sometimes you just never get to that 100 but my question being is i know you have the itch i know you've seen these young talents come up and i know you've 
uh, like you said, you've been on the BST. You're seeing you're seeing your friends, your coworkers, your peers, your brothers, your sisters, all of your friends and stuff. They're still doing their thing, and you're you're still within the business from but a different angle. But it's just not the same for one Nathaniel P. Carr. Uh, so my question is. With everything almost being around the corner, have you thought about getting in the ring? And if you have, have you really thought about, is this what I want to do? Maybe I could get hurt again in the near future. Uh, where are you at with wrestling and you're almost 100% right here? So wrestling is the ultimate fear right now, right? It's, you know, you see the Kylon Kings just picking up men three times my size. Bump it, you know, tossing them around. Um, you see, you know, the Sammy Diaz's, you know what I mean? Just taking that crazy bump on the aprons. And you see, <clears throat> and then you also see them going at the highest level. You see them traveling. You see them going everywhere. And they're competing on a high quality level. I never want to be the guy that is just keeping up, you know? So my concern isn't if I can still do this anymore. It's can I keep up with now these new younger talents, you know? No offense to the generation I grew up in for the most part, but, um, you know, I showed I can keep up with the Steve Pena. You know, you, you was there for that match. Um, no one expected me to keep up with this with Dan the Man. No one expected me to keep up with a hippie Dicky Moon. No, no one, you know expecting me to even wrestle a young, you know, Christian Casanova. You know, we all know who he is now. You know what I mean? Carmelo Hayes salute. You know, no one expected me, even that man's shirt you're wearing right now, stepped in the ring with him early on in my career. Nobody expected me to keep up with somebody like him. So it's, it was a lot of, car. you may not be able to do this, but enjoy the little ride you're having. And that's always been my determining factor is I'm Mr. Prove You Wrong. Like, say what you want. I missed to prove you wrong, you know? So I've always been about proving people wrong. And the fact that a lot of people are like, well, Carl, that was a fun little trip you did for seven years, you know, good job, kid. It's, it's like, I'm, I'm not done. I don't, I don't think I'm done. I, I have this need to keep proving you wrong. I want to step in the ring with the Jordan Rhodes. I want to step in the ring with the Dustin Wallace. Dustin Wallace, who watched me as a kid when I first debuted, the Zachariah Gibbs, who were, you know, was there when the Daniel Carr was first created and the concept of him appeared. And now he's a little shits. Sorry, excuse me. <laughs> yeah, you can't please. It's all it's all good. But that that that, that little Amish prick is a little Amish prick. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't like the way he was looking at Bull Dread the other night. Like that's the type, but that's the energy I'm on these days. It's okay, you, 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 you think I'm done with Dan the man? I'm not done with that guy from a long shot. We haven't finished this story yet either. Like, I want to get in the ring with Slick. Like, I want Slick to break me if he has to. Like, I want to get in the ring with the best. And she was has the best. And if I have to, if, if I get everybody on that roster, well, I'm not going to get destroyed by TJ Howard III because he's a loser, but everybody else on that <laughs> roster, I could probably lose to. Um, you know what I mean? You know, I would love to get this, this new Ryan Frost. I've never experienced this Ryan Frost. You do really. Me and Ryan Frost have never really been in the ring together, and the confidence that he's that he's he's just exuberating right now is amazing to see on him. I would love to get in the ring with this Ryan Frost. You know what I mean? I would love to see this Mark Alexander. You know, everybody keeps calling him Money Mark, which I would never use that in a commentary ever. You heard this from me. I would never <laughs> call <him> that. <laughs> but I want to see who's really money. Red, red, that crazy lunatic red. Like, what is wrong with you, Sawyer? You just, <laughs> you got a twist that bothers me, but I, I want to challenge that. Like, just, it's stuff like that. It's like, and then beyond test the strength, you, you have this Chris Battle, the, the, the new PAPW champion. Mm-hmm. Brand new. We talked about this interview being done two days after he won. Yes. Right? <laughs> I've never been in the, in the ring with Battle. I want to wrestle Chris Battle. I want to wrestle Bull Dread, who, when you think about it, inspired me to come back, really. Because this man was written off as just a hardcore person. And then the sexy beast was just a gimmick. And now this man is wrestling probably the best I've ever seen him wrestle, and I've known him for nine years. I want to get in the ring with that man now, too. You know what I mean? It's like, 
There's so much talent out there. You know, the Mighty Bosch. I want to team up with the Mighty Bosch. I don't want to challenge my that man. That means my tag, my tag team partner, yes. Your tag team partner. I don't, I don't challenge your tag team partner. I think, and you know what? I'm buying the Necronomicon. I'm saying it here first tonight. I'm buying the Necronomicon, right? I'm getting me a Ouija board, and I'm resurrecting freaking El Jabroni, okay? <laughs> nama, 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 nama. I'm bringing a band. We were supposed to be a tag team. All right, you listen? We were supposed to be a tag team, El Jabroni, out there in the spirit world. And you died on me, bro. You died. So I'm going to bring you back. The Jabba Bombs is going to exist for one night only, all right? Thank you. <laughs> so, you know, this is, you see, like, you, this is what I mean, like, the excitement and the, the possibilities is so amazing right now when it comes to wrestling that I'm excited for it. And I, and I can't sit back. I want to test myself against the best. I want to test myself. Like, Fly Nye, I've seen that kid when he first thought about becoming a wrestler. Like, I don't know, man. I'm not wrestling yet. Now he's a cocky little prick, too. But that's fine. <laughs> I want to get in a ring with him. I want to <laughs> test myself. I want to uh, test myself and all these people that's like, oh, hey, Car, Hey, big bro. I used to watch you. That was fun watching you back in the day. It's like, no, I can, I can still go. And I'm going to prove to everybody, hmm? as, long, as long as I'm staying healthy, I can still go. And that's just my, I want to prove everybody wrong. I want to end up with a title. I want to end up, like, the K1 looks pretty. That fist looks nice. Brother Greatness, I'm going to get that title for you, dude. Okay? <laughs> I put it out there in the world yeah. now. I'm getting money. I will hold the K1, his, his healing hand, before he does. Wow. He held the trophy. I'm going to hold a title. Yeah. There's a difference. You know what I mean? So, like, it just, like I said, like, so much out there, you know. Uh, you know, the magnificent Marcos. I've been in the ring with him. Uh, definitely want to, want to do one-on-one -on -one again. You know what I mean? We never did a one-on-one. -on -one. We did it a four-way. One of the first fight for your dreams, you know. Um, I would love to get a ring with Jiggy again, you know. Um, yeah, I just there's so many talent out there that I'm seeing coming up, like the Steve Legend, like that kid, you know, eat a cheeseburger, bro. I'll take him out to after I pin him, I will take him out to a meal so he can gain a little weight. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, you know, there's so many, there's so many different great talents and you know, tough and talented. Uh, you know, the GM there. Uh, I never have to get a ring with Meezy. I'm so happy about that because he would kill me. Yeah, big uh, Meezy. What a surprise that was. I was there in the back and I saw that. I was like, that chair was swinging. <laughs> it was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, do you, do you, have you found yourself within a timeline of any kind of, my body's feeling way better than it did? Not only my body, but my mind is feeling way better than it did a year, a year and a half ago. Did you, uh, did you kind of get a timeline going on when you think you're expected to be back in the ring, or you're just kind of taking it and just getting your body and mind ready? Okay, so the scary thing is, and I've, I've said this to uh, many other um, people, my mind is sharpest as ever been. You want to talk about a brain for this business? For um for the idea of what my I'm gonna be able to do in this ring again, it's probably the sharpest it's ever been. Um, now that my body has to catch up. Um, okay. going to the gym, working out. I've been posting this hundred day challenge on um, Facebook, and that's yeah. every you know every few days I post up. And by the hundredth day, I'm going to challenge somebody to a match. Don't know who yet. Don't know where. Um. But I'm going to challenge somebody because I am very focused on competing again, whether it's one more match, whether it's 10 more matches, whether I do it 100, you know? I'm coming back. And I want, you know what I mean? I just, you know, like I'm not trying to get choked up, but it's just, I want to leave on my terms. I'm not, and, no, and this is no diss to test the train. I got injured at a training day. With seven people there. You're telling me my last match in my history, and the guy who was told he was never going to be able to do this, to becoming a ta two time tag team champion, to be, to be traveling nine states, to be offered opportunities across the country and across the North America and South America, to end it all with a whimper at a training day, that's not gonna happen. 
If you're taking me out, you're taking me out in the biggest stages of the mall. You're going to take me out in the fight for your dreams. You're going to take me out in the diesel manias. You're going to take me out. If, it's your, if you're in the mania, whatever it is, that's when I go. I'm not going out in a slow whimper in a tiny show in a tiny corner in East Hartford randomly. You know what I mean? It's, it's I can't. I just can't. I need like if I need to if I need to fade away, I need to go out with a blaze of glory. I can't just whimper away. I need boom. So you know I'm coming back and I'm coming back not to just fade away. I'm coming back looking for gold. Like I would love to cement my legacy in Tessa Shane with some kind of gold around my waist. Mm-hmm. Not just Carr, the commentator. Not just a Daniel Carr, who's actually one of the only few people next to a Ty Shine who has been on almost every show in Tester Strength's history. I started at uh, training day three. How many are we at now? And I missed five, and two of them because of, because of a death and injury, and three was because of injuries. Hmm. So it's like I've never really missed a training day. I've never missed a show. Huh? Uh, so you met you mentioned Mr. Ty Shine. I know when I talk of Test of Strength, I may not bring up Mr. Shine's name because he's been on a hiatus as well. He's got life going on and whatnot, and it's been a minute since we've seen him. Uh, But if I can speak on him real quick, because first off, that's Ryan Frost's favorite wrestler in the entire universe. He's, you know, he will always put Ty Shine right up there on the very top of of all of them, to be honest with you. Um, and, and, And I have to say, I'm with him. But it took me a little bit because uh, he was injured for a little bit. He kind of tore his ass, literally. Um, and before he tore his ass to when he came back and, and at, at 100%, something happened to him as a performer, um, like really happened. I don't know if, if he just sat and stewed on some things or whatever, but I'm telling you, when he came back, he was the best high shine that I have ever seen um in a while because and not taking away from anything he was doing previous injury but and i've and i've even spoken to him on this post injury man ty shine and damn he's jumped his game up um great you know his in-ring has changed his performance has changed his interactions have even been boosted up with us the fans um his facials his words all of it um so ty shine and the reason why I do bring him up, because you did mention him, uh, a test of strength OG, uh, the very first student ever in test of strength. He's the reason I'm in test of strength. Um, I don't know if you, wanna, you remember that autism show that happened um, a couple a few uh, years I, ago. I was there. Exactly. T- I, the reason why I went to test of strength to train is because my opponent was one of their students. So I'm like, okay, who do I know that tests the strength that could go and, you know, kind of find out his weaknesses and stuff like that. And I hit up Aubrey. I took that trip to Watertown at the time, um, mm-hmm. trained alongside, um, you know, Letty, you know, Baba Booey. Um, I met Alex. Baba Boney. We, we like to call him Baba Boney. <laughs> Let, Letty Benny, whatever. We're, insert weird name here, okay? That man needs to get a dictionary. Anyway, I digress. Um, and I, I sat there in that class, you know, at the time I was still at PWA, but I spent three, four weeks at Tessa Strait. And you know what? I kind of never left again. I went to Tessa Strait and I stood. And that's all because of Ty Shine. That I brought it freak, um, introduced me to Tessa Strait and I beat him twice at Tessa Strait. So, uh, you know, just saying, I, I beat I beat the OG twice, so you know. Wow, I got that I got I got that dub twice. Wow, wow. Uh, I'm one of maybe four people in Touch Strength history that could say they pinned Dan the Man at a TOS show. Just saying, <laughs> you know. I, I, there's so many claims I can I can ring out, you know, that people <laughs> like to sleep on in Touch Strength that it's just a thing, you know. Well, I, <clears throat> I'm so, glad you brought brought that up because. A memory has just uh, surpassed us, actually, maybe two or three days ago. Um, And this is when PWA Pro Wrestling Academy uh, CT was running in Cheshire, Connecticut. Uh, And boys and girls, if you've been to Test of Strength, 
it was something similar, just a smidge bigger. Uh, but it was very similar in, in a size, if you will. And the energy um, was slightly different too. No offense to Tessa Shrink, but <clears throat> there's still there still some a magic there that happened. The, just the right formula, you know what I mean? The right amount of coke with rum, you know? It was just the perfect drink. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, because and, and if if you haven't ever heard me describe PWA, um, on the left side, th- and this is legit, on the left side were the the fans for the good guys, and along the side of the ring were the good guys. The good guys didn't go in the back and wait for themselves, wait for their turn to come out. There was no kind of curtain and all of that set up. It was we were the, the good guys on the left. Think about it, too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, th- there was uh, the good guys on the left that would stand the entire event. It was about an hour and a half-ish or so, you know. Five matches. And the whole left side was for the good guys fans. And then to the right side, obviously, would be the bad guy standing against that wall and the fans for the bad guys. And I really did that not know that. organically, too. Like, that wasn't a <laughs> thing we planned. We didn't say, hey, if you like if you like the asshole, sit over there. It just happened organically. It's, it's just like anywhere Fogman sits, the, the people that like the bad guy sit with him. It's weird. I don't know why. <laughs> Foggy, what do you do to people? <laughs> and and I, I wasn't uh, aware of that whole a scenario of how the fans kind of are split and the uniqueness and everything along with PWA, why they were standing on the left and the right of this. Now check this out real quick. I don't want to go too crazy on it. They took numbers and the announcer would get in there. Fabulous. Something fabulous. Mikey fabulous. Mikey fabulous. Yes. He would get in the ring and he would randomly pick numbers. It could be one and seven or two and seven or whatever it was. And this is the best thing. The guys on the left and the guys on the right, they never even knew who they were legit facing. That was one of the best freaking things about PWA because it was an odd, not odd, it was a very unique flavor to uh, wrestling, first off. And the wrestlers had no clue who they were, who, who they were wrestling. So it's not like they're hanging out and, Maybe, you know, talking amongst themselves a little bit pre-event, if you will. It was random ass shit on the fly. Mikey would pick one and seven. The title because shots were random, too. You guys yes. chose that we got a title shot. Uh, yes. How many times did they All say, the do you want the Daniel Carter face for the Ox Baker Old School Championship? Yeah! Well, I guess he has to wrestle for the Old School Championship tonight. You know, uh, or you no, know, you can't. And it happened. You know, it was always a surprise. We had a couple extra people who want to see a triple threat. They've asked us that, <laughs> you, you, yeah. you know, um, that scenario. So that was extra number, you know. Yeah, it, it was just absolutely amazing and something so unique that I've never been a part of. Um, so it could be Nathaniel Carr, and uh, you know, and I'm just going to use Dan the Man because of the moment of you <laughs> getting the win, the one, two, three over Dan the Man in front of First family car. Ever first time I ever pinned Dan the Man. Not the last uh, time, as Dan likes to rewrite history. <laughs> like I states already, but whatever. Um, it's not the last time. I, but it was definitely the first time. Mama Carr was there. My sister was yes. there. My two nephews. One of his birthday was there. Mm-hmm. Um, my best friend, who has never seen me wrestle before, was there for the first time ever. Um, it was during a elimination fatal four way match with me, Damian Darko, um, Ronnie Ribs, and um, Dan the Man. And um, like I said, it was a moment. Uh, it, it was magic that night. Um, that crowd was on fire. I've never heard Nerd Up chanted so much in probably my life. Um, there's a reason why my merch is called Nerd Up now, Nerd Up Apparel and Nerd Up Nation. It's because of the PWA crowd. And salute to Ryan Frost. He also very influenced that Nerd Up statement. He actually started the chant. Um, I always give him credit. I would never give him free merchandise, but I always get <laughs> always get free credit. He always get free credit for me. You never get free merchandise, but you always get free credit. <laughs> but yeah, he uh, came up with the nerd up after the Briscoe Brothers man up chant. He came up with the nerd up chant, and then nerd up led to nerd up nation. That's the you know led to everything we are now. So you know, mm-hmm. and you apparel is definitely uh, a baby of Ryan Frost's creativeness. So oh. What what a fun fact we just learned there, boys and girls. Uh, 
the PWA days, tons of fun, my man. What what a great environment. We always had a, a blast. Of, and not only that, I could buy an eight pack of tickets for like, I don't know, 15 fucking dollars or something stupid like that. I mean, yeah, their prices uh, were crazy. 40, 40, no, 30 bucks. I think they gave you like two free tickets for if you bought an eight pack for the first time. Yeah. 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 It was amazing. It, it was, I think it's an amazing concept. I hope somebody brings it back. I love the randomness of it, um, random yeah. selection. Um, I mean, and then you got introduced to so many. We had um, we had Anthony Green there at one point. We had Leo Rush. We've had um, Wrecking Ball, obviously, was champion for a couple of times. Um, we had, you know, so many different names came through that building. Fox Minier, uh, the first appearance in Connecticut, um, HBO. Um, also, the, the Sunny, also, Sunny, Sunny Kiss, Kiss was there. Yes. Yep. Sunny Kiss. That was a very interesting night for a lot of the uh, young male fans. Uh, <laughs> they were like, that, that's, a, that's, a nice, that's a nice booty, but I don't know how to feel about that. It's like, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> it was fine. a confusing It was we, a confusing we all, we all acknowledged it. Everybody was like, that's a nice ass. Let's move on. That's it. It was awesome. <laughs> um, I, I can't talk about how you remember the little kids that started off from the PWA, and then they, they were hardcore fans by the end of it. I've had them yes. cry on the phone with me. The dad called me up. It was like, my sons can't make it for the last PWA show. I'm sorry. I feel so bad. They want to go so badly. Um, yeah, it was just stuff like that. It was just, I got messages. Uh, my uh, messages of fans. I mean, Hippie can tell you this. Uh, they went to a concert, and they posted a video of the son doing a dance. He was doing Hippie's dance. You remember Hippie's old victory dance? <laughs> he was doing vic Hippie's old victory dance. And he was like, yeah, he's getting my, little, he's getting, my son is getting his little Hippie on his football game. It's just like moments like that. You can't, you can't make that up. You can't fake mm -hmm. that. That, 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 it was, that moment and it's something that I don't know if anybody else would want to admit, but PW wasn't looking good before Friday Night Fights. Like our show wasn't really running that much. Um, we wasn't really doing much. We just moved to a new building. We didn't really have a, a legging underneath us. And that Friday Night Fights re reinvigorated all of us. Mm -hmm. We came back with a vengeance. We, we took a simple concept that they tried in 2012, and we brought it back, and it was beautiful. It was just, yeah, it, the crowds grew. The people grew. It was, it was a, a go-to event. It was used to punish kids. Like, if you don't act up, you can't go to PWA this week. <laughs> remember, remember little Na Na um, Nazia? That he used to curse all the time. That little kid that used to always curse so bad. Like he he had the dirtiest mouth, but he was ten. And he would curse all the time. He cursed out um uh EC Negro, you remember? EC Negro, <laughs> watch your mouth, young man. You can't talk to me like that. He goes, fuck you. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's just, you know, I can I can please, I can spend an hour on just the the legacy that PWA uh Friday Night Fights did. Something in so many uh, ways. Yeah, uh, it yeah. was definitely something. Uh, anytime I ever said to the old man, "Hey, uh, you going to Friday Night Alley fights?" He goes, "Just buy the tickets. We'll be going to all of them." And I'm like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> okay. Yeah, <laughs> I think uh, Alley fights definitely, in their way, capture that same kind of energy. Mm -hmm. You have your loyals that come out, that know every character, that knows every catchphrase. If, in, in a lot of ways, it spoiled me. Like, can you imagine mm -hmm. being so, they know the nerd up, they, they know the chants, they know the sayings, they know everybody's, you know, gimmick, per se. Now you go to New Jersey randomly, to wrestle in New Jersey, you just automatically expect everybody to know <laughs> nerd up. It's like, oh, that's right, y'all know this yet, that's right. Y'all gonna love this. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know it yet. They're gonna love it. Like you know, it's just uh, like you oh, are crap, I'm spoiled by PWA. <laughs> you, you are so right with the fans knowing what they like and what and what they don't like, and they follow this rivalry, this heated rivalry between yourself and Dan the Man. And when you got that pen over Dan the Man in front of your family, not only your family, because. What I did, I, I wasn't sitting, I would usually sit in the second row behind Foggy. Mm -hmm. What I was doing for a couple of these matches that specific evening, I actually think there was a, a, 
some footage that same night of Hippie Dicky Moon versus Sebastian Cage with some really cool yeah. stuff on there as well. Um, I stood in the back of where all the seats were lined up and got a, a different point of view. I think you stood on the chair and got a, like a downward angle from most of the show. Dude, I am telling you that magic that you were speaking of, that was one of those nights at PWA. The entire place absolutely lit up when when uh, Mr. Nathaniel P. Carr got himself that win over Dan the Man. We absolutely lost our minds. It was so much fun. It was it was an amazing moment. Um, what made it special was my I didn't know my family was coming. <laughs> um, I didn't plan it. You know, like I said, hey mom, come down. You know, I think. It's it's some magic about when my nephews and my mom is there at one time, and my friends are there because the first time they saw me wrestle, I did a swan time off the top rope onto wrecking ball, and I missed. Oh, and my mom, my mom still makes the joke that you can't get up to clean your room, but you can to the top rope and do a jump off of it. <laughs> Don't tell me you're too tired for anything anymore. That is perfect. I love Mama Car. That is perfect. Yeah, I mean, Mama Car, you know, Mama Car became my own little mini celebrity at PWA too. That's another thing. People still, uh, I was at, um, I was at, um, uh, I don't want to mess with the name, uh, Let It Wrestle, I think it's called, um, out in uh, Massachusetts every Thursday night. Um, uh, I messed up the name. Uh, they're affiliated with um, Beyond Wrestling and oh. Limitless, I think. What, they call let it wrestle or oh uh let it wrestle no let's let's wrestle no that's up in maine yeah um no it's something I'm, like I'm that. Not, i'm not sure. i was just up there i was just up there and i'm bumping into pedro montones the third and you know some other talents and they you know first thing they said to me was i was mama car i'm like really guys you haven't seen me forever and the first person you asked about mama car really <laughs> that's what we're doing now mama car <laughs> like, uh, I almost remembered me for the PWA days. It was really it was a nice little pop for myself. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I almost <laughs> want to entitle this episode, and you know I call each one a different name. I almost want to entitle this one "Mama Car" for crying out loud. I mean, for real. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Mama Car has been hit on by Azriel. Mama Car, <laughs> my Mama Car yelled out in the middle of me wrestling Troy Stevens. He has a cute butt. <laughs> Mom, my opponent. Uh, Mama Car hit on, on the sexy beast in the middle of a match. And I'm like, Mom, oh, wow. what are you doing? And he'd say, wait, hold on a second. And walks off the ring and hands her his shirt. And then takes a, like, family portrait with me afterwards while her, she's wearing the shirt. Like, I'm supposed <laughs> to be happy about it. Like, I'm over there pouting. <laughs> and she just smiled up a storm with a sexy beast shirt on, and Dread is just like, yeah. Oh I'm my like, god! <laughs> like pineapples, pineapples. Uh, yeah, Mama Car became a mini celebrity. These are the good times that we would never have without wrestling, my man. Uh, great memories yeah. right there. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, right now, set in stone, making an executive decision. This one's called Mama Car. Um. <laughs> I'm uh, gonna so, call when it's when it's aired. She's like, "Baby, oh my God, it's named after me! I can't <laughs> wait to see what y'all said about me." I, was like, I talk nothing but junk about you. Get off the phone, click. <laughs> I'm a lie. I'm like, I said nothing but bad things about my mama. I said you're yeah, the reason why I'm in therapy. Click. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh wow. Uh, it's starting to escalate a little bit. Uh, PWA. Um, <laughs> uh, now, PWA, you said you wish that, you know, maybe someone could bring back the concept. PWA was this close to making a, a, a smidge of a return pre-pandemic, yeah. uh, uh, 2020 in April, if I'm not mistaken. April, yeah. and then in August, August. Yep. there was going to be two August. shows in two different states, one in Georgia and yeah, then and, 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 uh, in April, and then one in Connecticut. They had, didn't have a place yet. Uh, in Connecticut uh, in August. And I happened to interview one Miss Kara Scarfo right in the midst before all of the world was shutting down. 
she she's actually the only person I've done this with. We did a full blown interview, and I'm talking maybe for 45, 50, maybe a, a solid hour, maybe even a little bit more. And we went to the old stomping grounds over at PWA. It was a beautiful day out, and we did a selfie STP and just walked and just kind of shot the shit about Kara Scarfo wrestling PWA days. Uh, and that, you know, what an amazing time we had talking to her about PWA. That was good stuff, man. Good stuff. Well, it's uh, just such a, it's just a beautiful story of PWA in general. Um, even just almost like the, the, the little happy post wrestling lives that both of them are living with um, Joseph R. Schmidt with his beautiful two daughters, newly remarried, you know, Kara doing her thing, you know, amazing, ha still happy, just a ray of light. When you, when you, when you speak to her, you hear from her. Um, it's just so great to see this post wrestling life that is possible for people. Um, and, and I still never got my match with Rashman. I'll never be happy about that. Uh, I'll never be, you know what I mean? I always wanted to, you know, it's it's a thing. It's like you want to, you know, Darth Vader versus Luke. Like you want to you wanna take him out. But, um, you know, <laughs> I understand. And my background looks like I'm wearing uh, Zippo pants from the 80s. Jesus, goodness gracious. Uh, well, like actually... That. Actually, before we hit record, I seen it and I did not say anything upon it because it kind of made me gag a little bit because it reminds me of Buff Dad and Too Buff way too much and their so, apparel. I'm so just, sorry, man. I didn't mean to trigger trauma. I'm so yeah. sorry. Hold on. Let me, can we go? I'm not helping. I'm not helping. All right. Sorry. <laughs> Next time, I promise. Uh, yeah, I just, uh, that's another two people I would love to get in the ring with. Oh, my. Can you imagine? The Nerd of Nation with uh, Mighty Bosch against Buff Inc. That just sounds like just pure entertainment. That sounds like mm -hmm. pure fun. It does. Uh, now, speaking of Mr. Aim to Entertain again, are you looking to do the drives? Go across the country, maybe break some borders uh, north or south? Or are you trying to just kind of Get back into the motion of things. Maybe stay in the immediate area. And again, you've named a lot of names there that you <laughs> your plate could be very full with. Uh, what's what's kind of the end game here uh, with coming back? Listen here, sir. Don't you quote Avengers with me? Talk about end game. <laughs> I didn't have tears in my eyes. Still thinking about. Hey, I didn't mean to. I, I did not mean to bring Thanos into this. I am so sorry. Oh, again? Why you keep talking about this man? <laughs> <laughs> Traumas, man, traumas. Um, <laughs> but the end game for me is always the same. It's proving people wrong. Like, people don't realize Nathaniel Cars, just because I'm not active, I just opened up my, um, which is not a really a, a, an exclusive anymore. It would have been a couple of days ago, but okay. my store went live today. Mm -hmm. um, all my merchandise, my shirts, my hats, coming out with beanies like this with Nerd Up Nation symbol. Uh, Baseball caps, everything. Um, it's on the website. You can go check it out. Um, definitely going to plug that when I remember the name. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, it's, it's virtualmerchbooth.com slash Nathaniel Carr. Uh, could you repeat that just one more time, my friend? It's called virtualmerchbooth.com slash Nathaniel Carr. Got you. Uh, I uh, kind of on my Facebook everything. I sent it to you already through a Facebook link through a messenger. Uh -huh. uh, but awesome, yes. I digress. Uh, but yeah, um, definitely been in contact with promoters, been in contact with different companies. Um, okay. I'm in talks to Ohio, Michigan, Illinois, um, California, Ecuador, um, oh. Toronto, um, and um, Florida and Georgia. Um, yeah. If I'm gonna go out, I'm doing a, I'm doing a tour. Hmm. Just give me a van, and I'm gonna go everywhere. I'm gonna make some new appearances, some return appearances. Um, like I said, I've never been the type to to quote unquote need a home base. Uh, mm -hmm. I was one of the first students at PWA to say later's, and I went to four states before uh, anything else. You know, I hit up while well, anybody was doing shows over here. I was working in Pennsylvania, New Jersey. I was working in Ohio. Uh, we did 
uh, I worked down with a group of guys from PWA. We did North Carolina. Mm-hmm. Uh, I went back down and did Tennessee. Um, you know, so for the most part, my grind has always been getting the car. You know, and cars have a car, so imagine those <laughs> all the states I name, and I would have a vehicle. It was trained, playing the automobile. I was taking those trips, jumping in cars. I jumped in the cars with Dirtbag Dan. I jumped in cars with the uh, the late great Big Jim Anderson. He got me into uh, him and um, Jess. They both got me into um, Pennsylvania look um, of territories. Uh, upstate New York territories, Michigan. I did New Hampshire. I've done Rhode Island. Um, I got into the car with um, a couple of guys, all different names now. So I don't want to say the old name, uh, but guy <laughs> in with. Um, I know you remember guy Joe. He used to uh, wrestle here on PWA once in a while. Okay. Uh, he, I got in his car with him. Went to Rhode Island. Made a connection with um, Bob Evans, who remembered me every time he saw me. He's like, how did you get here? I thought you don't have a vehicle. But I hopped in the car like you told me to. He's like, smart kid. And he put me on the show. And um, I was in a three-weight um, tag team match. He gave me great critiques. He, people were chanting nerd up by the time I came back out for the Battle Royal. <laughs> yes. I, think I, I think I did a good job. I think I did a good job. I don't know about you. <laughs> Sold some shirts so maybe people remember me. <laughs> um, you know, stuff like that. So mm-hmm. you, you think I'm a be satisfied with no offense, but just wrestling at Tessa Shrink, just wrestling locally. Like I need, I need to go out there. I need the Nerd Up Nation to feel like a nation. Then when you mm-hmm. see Ohio people wearing my shirts, you see, you see people from Tennessee chanting Nerd Up. I want because what I stand for, what the whole Nerd Up Nation was about is we don't blend in. We stand out. We don't blend in. So many people want you to to be to settle and to be happy with just being a nice little person in the background and just you know just play your position. It's like I wasn't born to do that. I was never the person that could just stand back and just be like from the background. Like no, I was born to stand out, and I'm going to show the world and locally, mentally, whatever. That's my legacy. It's I was born to stand out. I was never born to blend in, and I refuse to allow that to be my legacy. Other than that. Uh, well, we'll definitely be keeping our eyes out to see where you're headed. Maybe see some media and footage come out of such events as you uh, make your travels. Uh, would you, you be know, going so? No, I mean, like I said, oh, go ahead. Uh, you, you know, like for, for right now, it's just working on getting ring ready again, working mm-hmm. on shaking off that rust. Um, mm-hmm. Right now, it's looking good for the most part. Uh, not great, but it's definitely not as bad as I thought it could be. Trust me. <laughs> Uh, you know, but, would um, would you be going uh, solo on the road? Yes, uh, most likely I'll be going solo on the road. Uh, there's definitely a couple of guys that I'll probably take the trips with, but I'm not going to put them out there. <laughs> uh, those are all surprises. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's definitely a few guys that uh, I will be taking trips with. A few guys that will be reconnecting with. Um. And you know, like I said, it's it's I'm I'm not I'm not going out to prove anything. I'm not going out to prove anybody else anything. I'm pulling something myself. Uh, this is uh, a personal tour for me. It's going to feel like um, because I want to I, I want to say goodbye properly to myself. Mm-hmm. If I if I hang up Nathaniel Carr and return and go fully behind the scenes with filming and commentary and whatever interviewing um definitely that's that's the next step right now is interviewing person um, i might be stealing your job kincaid i'm sorry uh, um you know um i definitely want to do it on my terms this time nice. and that's what the whole thing's about it's saying goodbye on my terms hanging up my boots on my terms uh- Actually, we may retitle saying goodbye on my own terms. That's actually, uh, I'm, I'm feeling that. Um, slash mama car. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I can't, I cannot take that off the board. We, we just have to keep it mama car. She would, she would smack me around. Uh, and my car turned 60 last month and she still <laughs> threatens to take my butt every time she gets a chance. Don't you make me slap you. I'm like, you live in four <laughs> states away. 
How about chocolate <laughs> gonna reach all the way across four states? But she'll make it happen. I'll get smacked with chocolate right now. <laughs> Uh, we have an event coming up. Unfortunately, I don't miss Test of Strength shows, but I am going to be missing this next one coming up. It is a road show, what I like to call the TOS pay-per-views. Uh, this is one of the bigger shows that TOS hosts, T Test of Strength out of East Hartford, called Dear Norma 2. I know it's uh, dear to the hearts of the TOS fam over there, mm -hmm. and this will be Dear Norma 2. Um, is there any details that you could share with us, the fans, just so we can get uh, the, the Test of Strength uh, event out there? I'm going to be up in Maine at another event. My love, Cindy Hart, who is ring announcing, she's going to be doing her gig up at Vacation Land Pro Wrestling. So, uh, hey, she's getting... working there. So, why are you not? So, you can still come to Test of Strength. It's fine. Let her go. It's called Uber. Just let her go. It's fine. It's fine. And, okay. No, no, no. Let me, we let have me, to... let me get you in trouble. Let me get you in trouble, Kiki. No, not... <laughs> TOS, 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 come on. One of us, one of us. <laughs> no, 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 no. We have to support my love on this road trip. No, no he brother, brother. No, he brother, brother. I'm, I, I understand. I understand. <laughs> if I could go up to Maine too, I'd probably join you. I would have joined you. It sounds like it sounds like a fun. It sounds like a fun little um spot. I definitely want to. That's definitely on my list. Uh, vacation land. That's definitely on my list. Of places I want to. It is. I they bring a in. great. They bring a great crowd, and like you were saying before, they know who to cheer and they know who to boo. They know the catchphrases and. There was a couple hundred, probably 250 or so when we were there uh, last month. And my goodness, we were kind of afraid on how the fans were going to be up there. It was pretty much just like around here. They know who the hell they want to cheer for and boo for, and they make their voices known. Uh, good times up there at VPW. Yeah, definitely, uh, check them out. definitely on my list. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Uh, dear number two, do you have any deets, maybe some time, uh, an address or a date or anything like that for us that you can share? Uh, I could share the date. Okay. Date is May seventh. No, Ooh, terrible human being. May seventh is Saturday, right? Yes. Yeah, May seventh is Saturday. Because I'm gonna go see uh, Mom on May sixth, aka the Multiverse of Madness, Doctor Strange. See, I can tell you all that information. I am a <laughs> terrible wrestler, but I can tell you everything <laughs> about the Multiverse of Madness and where it's airing. And at what time I'm gonna see it. But you act about Dear Norm, I'm like, I think it was Saturday <laughs> in Northampton, Massachusetts, around 6 p.m., I guess. <laughs> but it's an incredible lineup. All joking aside, it's an incredible lineup. Listen here, Test Train, we're going to do what Test Train does best. Um, show new faces, innovate the way we look at um, indie pay-per-views, and pretty much be the gold standard. Hell, mm -hmm. I would say the platinum standard of how to, how to wrestle on the indies so you know i can't can't praise enough about the high quality talent and then of course uh, you know the mission is probably going to be doing something that day whatever anyways uh, i'm just glad uh, I'm, look listen I, I'm, I'm a miss you Kincaid, but i'm glad there's gonna be less cheering section for the mission that night okay so by <laughs> all means enjoy and enjoy maine oh uh, no 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 we we never cheer for the mission ever never or not once uh, no, my love you does. never you never cheer for the mission. No. Okay? You never cheer for the mission. No. Exactly. Uh, you know so, what? <laughs> you have to. <laughs> uh, what I did want to just touch upon real quick, uh, dear Norma, you are correct, dear Norma, North Northampton, and boys and girls, it is at 6 o'clock, but let me tell you, this this championship match, they have, Magnificent Marcos has been the reigning defending champion. And not only that, about two events ago, they brought in, maybe even three, they brought in a, and I always speak on their championships, how unique and beautiful they are. <laughs> they, re, they replaced their original unique and beautiful championship with something even more unique and even more beautiful. I don't know how the hell they did that, but they did. This thing is so heavy. I've held this championship. Uh, Marcos, and along with that damn honest Abe and his stupid ass cane, and he's not a hurt man. Boys and girls, if he ever says that, don't believe that man. Uh, always, always lies about being hurt. Bullshit. Listen, listen, Kincaid. You want you want exclusive between you and me, between you, me, and the internet. Here's my exclusive take on this. You have the, one of the two best talents in Test of Strength, a former PWA student. A former Crown K1 Classic person in Sammy 
the ace Diaz, right? Mm -hmm. You have my hero and yours, Mike Skyros. You know what I mean? There's only one Moon Knight I like to talk about, and it ain't on Disney Plus, and it's Mike Skyros, <laughs> okay? And then you have that conniving, that annoying, that Adobo Games himself. Micro Marcos, <laughs> all right, with Honest Abe, with Ref Q in his pocket, because they take a lot of selfies together, don't they? For yes. a biased person, they're taking a lot of selfies together. And then you have our GM, who's supposed to be about the business, but somehow openly announces the champion. And the only time he's ever done this, mind you, only time mm -hmm. is to tell us about Magnificent Marcos. Really? So it's pretty much it's a it's a it's a it's a two on four match. We're gonna get pure wrestling and talent from two guys, and then we're gonna get the cheating line slum a la, mm -hmm. a la Boricuas, as I like to call them. Uh, Honest Abe, you know what I mean? Magnificent Marcos. You know, not my champ, not my champ. Ref Q, which ref Q, I got my eye on you Q, because that's funky. That's funky. You can't say nothing, KK, but I can't. Because I ain't scared of him. And we don't live in the same state, so he's nowhere near me. I can talk my junk. I'm not scared of you, Q. All right? From a distance, I'm not scared of you, Q. In person, with people. <laughs> when I'm honest, when I'm defending Kincaid, trying to get these likes, I will talk my junk about you, Q. All right? I don't trust you as a referee. If I come back to wrestling, you're not refereeing my matches. Because I don't trust you. I'm going to check you. You're not going to check me. I'm going to check you. Mm -hmm. Got my eye on you. No, th that that that's a fine observation, sir. When you do come back and you get in that ring, if Ref Q is on the the, the card, if you will, the bill, uh, you you definitely have to hand pick your own ref. You do not. Uh, want I want Bill. Guy. I want Bill. I, I want I want Gina or Bill. Like that's my two people I'm going for. I will bring <laughs> Gina back from wherever state she's living in right now. <laughs> put her on a plane. Buy her new blue shoes. Put little lightning bolts on them, like Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> So she could count quick for threes, okay? <laughs> I want Gina. Uh, we love blue shoes. Oh my goodness, do we love some blue shoes? Blue shoes. We miss you, blue. We do. We we so do. Um, making this transition from wrestler to commentator, we come full circle. Now it's going to kind of get flipped back. Uh, he he's about to make that transition once yet again and uh, get off of that behind the scenes thing and get back in the ring and to prove everybody wrong, it seems to be honest with you, you know, uh, Listen, yeah, I enjoyed my commentary. I enjoyed me with a live microphone. Do you imagine me with a live microphone and a purpose? That's even more scary. <laughs> <than the car. laughs> give me a target. Like give me a TJ. How the third, you know what? I'll say it right now. I, if I come back, to test the strength wrestling. I want TJ Howell the third first. Then I want Brother Greatness. Then I want Red. Those are the th first three, all right? I want Red, White, and Black, all right? That's the three I want, all right? <laughs> I said it here first. That's what I want. I want TJ Howell the third. I want, I want Crazy Greatness with his eye twitch, and I want Red. That's what I want. Those are the three. If I, that's what I, the only thing I get a test the strength, never get a title shot, I don't care. Those are the three I want. And then I may well, not team up with Frost because I need some of that Frost Force power because, you know, y'all yeah, yeah, mother hovers are, are loyal. Y'all <laughs> loyal to Frost. Jesus. I want some of that attention. See you guys. You heard my merch store. You have no excuses anymore. Buy my shirt. I'm looking at you, Terry. I'm looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> uh, Frank, that's a shame when uh, the fans uh, get called out more than the wrestlers do. <laughs> uh, amigo to amigo I'm here to help you um, I'm going to give you just a little tip That you could probably get a really quick win Off of Brother Greatness Real easy Like now, it'll go, It goes like this If you can get a cardboard cutout Or maybe even like a fat head Of one Mike Skyros And plant it strategically Somewhere around the room And just point There's Mike Skyros He's going to lose his ever loving mind. His attention is going to go directly to there. And then you give him the old school boy, and you're all done. That's, that's the secret. That's not the case anymore. See, brother, the, the, the magic about brother crazy greatness is it's not about the person. It's about the title. CB is about the title. 
So if I walk out to the ring with the K1 Classic title and say Ichiban just decided to give it to me because he has something better else to do, like he's going to go to <laughs> AEW or something like that, so he just handed me the title, it would just send him on a lunacy rant. What? You can't hand him the title? <laughs> he was a little crazy dog. <laughs> like, an angry fro- uh, frog. I'll cover the frog. He'll <laughs> be running around like that. You can't hand over the title to people? <laughs> So that's what I need to, that's, that's the plan. Don't, don't, look, don't air this part. Take this one out. Delete this. Here. But that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to literally buy a replica of the K1 Classic that's a teal in hand. And I'm going to take it to the ring and just lie and say that it's my decided to go to AEW and he handed me the title to live on with the legacy. Mm-hmm. And I didn't have to pin him for it. I just, he just gave it to me. And that's going to make him go crazy. And he's going to snap, attack the ref, so hopefully it's Q, tack the ref, get disqualified, and I beat him. That's it. See, TJ Howell III, I'm actually going to talk to his father to freeze all his freaking trust funds money. Ooh. So that way he's going to be a bum. We're going we're gonna to have a TJ Howell III version of Happy Corbin. Okay. <laughs> we're walking around with dirty shirts and a, a, a four o'clock shadow. Okay? Because I'm going to grow up here. You know? And then Red Sawyer. See, wrestling, I got this thing. I actually caught NSA on him. So when he gets in the ring, the NSA is going to pop in and arrest him for his weird conspiracy theories. Because you have to remember, I fought a guy named Damian Darko. I know how to handle conspiracy gingers. Right. They ain't got no souls. So I know <laughs> I got a plan. I got a game plan. And then eventually, I want to say that's right. I caught him on now too. Patrick say, you get in his hands. Okay, I'm, I'm drunk with I'm drunk with power. Let me stop. Let me stop. I'm, I'm drunk with, with excitement. Patrick, my bad, bro. I'm not I'm not actually challenging you. You can stay in the back. You enjoy that position you in behind Dan the Man and Evie. Actually, I want to challenge Evie too because he scares me even more. So y'all two stay back there. But brother greatness, I can take that one out. He's tiny. He's the smaller one. He's wiry, but I can take him. Brother greatness. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Uh, the third, let's, let's be fair. Your limited brother greatness impression, spot on, my friend. Thank you, thank you. Yes, thank you. yes, spot on. I could do a TJ Howell the third impression, but I could get my head that far out of my own ass, so I can't do it. Oh, no. wow. Oh, that, that hit home a little bit, I'm sure. Oh, wow. Um, uh, your game plan seems very logical, I got to say. And had, none of them have anything to do with wrestling. It has, I do sm- I'm smarter because I'm the smartest man in the building. People have to realize Nathaniel Carr, Mr. Angel Entertain, secretly translates to being a nerd means that I'm better than you. Mm. That's simple. So with your game plan here, uh, you've got, <clears throat> excuse me, you've got TJ uh, being uh, the wish uh, Corbin. Uh, yep. Looking sad, no money. Looking grubby, mm-hmm. uh, n- not having a Consuela to help him I mean, out. He really looks scrubby with those stupid socks, but <laughs> more grubby. <laughs> uh, so he probably won't show up, which means you'll get the win with a count out. Yep. Then you're talking brother greatness and the K1 thing going on. He's going to get himself disqualified. That's a done deal. Then you've got the NSA over here on red. Uh, he may not even show up either. He may get arrested before he even gets to the show. That could be another kind. Con- Dude, you, you're running a flawless plan here, and you haven't even done one move. Exactly. Because it's about wrestle smarter, not harder, people. Okay. Listen, oh. I can do a dive through the ropes too, Kylon King. But you know what? I can stay in the ring and still win by not going after my opponent who's getting counted out outside the ring. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, I didn't say any of this. So that was all Mr. Carr. I mean, I don't want no suicide, uh, Tope Suicida coming in. Because that Kylon King comes out like a rocket. Yeah, no, he's a bullet, okay? That man is scary. I've been literally there when he's died. You remember um, Tesseract. <laughs> that man died through the rope so far that he landed where I was doing commentary. In the back of the building. That's not normal. That's uh, unholy. Him and Flash are unholy human beings. 
my dad was right on the very corner there in the front row. And uh, the second time that someone was going to come out was going to be Slick Wagner Brown. And my dad literally got up and ran to the fucking door because he did not want any of that madness. It, it, I, I swear to goodness, I'm not going to lie. If wrestling was Pokemon, right, you would have the first evolution would be um, Brother Greatness. Then it would evolve into a Kyle King. And then the ultimate evolution would be a Slick Wagner Brown. Yeah. Like, that looks like that's the Pokemon evolution. Of wrestling right there. I'm telling you. <laughs> oh wow. That's quite that's quite interesting. <laughs> Woo. Uh good stuff. Uh as Vince McMahon would say, that's some good shit. That's such good shit. Um Mr. Carr, this has been uh such a fine conversation with you. We've learned so much. Bunch of fun facts that we never even knew. Um, I'm so glad that we were able to talk the transition of because I didn't know what the hell happened to you. And I don't like to get in people's business and stuff. Um, so I never knew any of what we spoke upon a- until you shared with, with all of us here. So I, I definitely appreciate the, the story of that transition. Wow. Crazy. Um, now we're right around the corner, possibly in the very, very near future of seeing one Nathaniel Carr uh, come back. And getting going on his tour, if you will, and uh, going out on his own terms, because uh, that's the way we kind of like it. We don't like our, our 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 friends that we make that we make on the uh, on the indie scene. We love when they rise to occasions. We love to see him get to these AEW darks and the impacts, and you know the WWE and the AEW uh, roster and stuff. We like to see our, our, our friends rise to these occasions. Um, but seeing a guy or a girl go through injury and not give up and want to come back, and it may be scary as uh, AF for them when they try to make that return. Uh, but I've always said, and I will always say it again, a million percent credit for any athlete, I don't care if it's wrestling or whatever, to, to get into a serious injury and want to return and I know it's a passion, and I get that. But to want to return and really have that question mark at times, my heart is with all of you guys and girls, and it's just a million percent credit of persevering and sacrificing. We talk about a lot on this show, the sacrifices and all of everything it takes to be a wrestler. Uh, you, my man, uh, a pleasure, and I cannot wait to see what your near future brings, one Mr. Nathaniel P. Carr. Thank you, Kincaid. You know you're my favorite, Kincaid. Oh, thank you. Uh, I'm not everybody. I only, I only know two. I, I only know two, Kincaid, but still. No, no, that's okay. That's okay. The ratio to uh, who the favorite Kincaid is, myself or Papa Kincaid, I am way down. <laughs> I'm way down here. Oh yeah, pa- uh, Papa Kincaid is, is kind of a legend. So it's like <laughs> he kind of he he kind of beat you every once, but. You know, the public came on by my merchandise. You did, so you went. <laughs> <laughs> he, you're invested in the in the in the nation, so. <laughs> uh, before we do let you go, um, we like to give, uh, we like to give a couple minutes to the talent and give us the details of where we can find them on the Twitter, on the old face page, and if there's footage on YouTube or uh, if you got a porn hub or anything you have to offer us. We want to check I don't this talk out. about my OnlyFans, okay, sir? How dare you? Oh, we're not going to talk okay. about my OnlyFans, right? Oh, I have to be taken okay. down because it's too sexy. Oh, all right. Uh, so <laughs> but, uh, you can find me on Instagram on the Daniel P. Carr CT. Um, you, you can find me on TikTok on the, uh, the Daniel Carr Pro CT. Um, Instagram at the Daniel Carr Pro CT. Um, Twitter, Nathaniel Carr CT. Um, what else? Uh, the Nerdum Nation Station is actually going to be starting on YouTube um, in September, where I'll be coming up with funny sketches and just more stuff. I'm doing on TikTok, but it'll be done in a bigger scale. Okay. Plus, all my wrestling promos, all my hot takes on all indie shows I'll be doing will be on the Nerdum Nation Station, uh, which is not a lot of hot takes. I'm I'm, I'm not controversial. <laughs> it's, it's it's more like come see the show and a lot of movie references, but mm-hmm. uh, you know my movie takes, my hot movie uh, reference um, references and all that stuff will be done there too. 
Um, I'm having fun doing TikToks, so I don't know. I may be too old for it, but I'm enjoying myself doing them. So <laughs> that's always fun. Uh, repeat the store where our friends can find the Nerd Up Nation uh, merch. All new, all all future and current Nerd Up Nation merchandise can now be found at virtualmerchbooth.com slash Nathaniel Carr with two R's. Excellent. Excellent information. Without that, we can't connect. We can't follow. We can't see your journey. Uh, and I appreciate all that information. Uh, is there anything that we haven't spoken uh, uh, spoken upon tonight that you'd like to bring to the table that I haven't mentioned? Because again, we don't write nothing down. We just kind of go off of the cuff here. Is there any topic that you wanted to discuss specifically that I haven't brought up? Um, let me see. We talked about my disgust of the mission. Um, yeah. My appreciation and taste of the young talent. I think it's amazing. Mm -hmm. um, definitely going to be doing stuff with uh, Tough and Talented um, over mm -hmm. the summer. Mm -hmm. That should be fun. Uh, I might, you know, be going to check out, uh, as a fan for once, I'm going to be checking out a couple of PWA shows, uh, PAPW shows in the future. Oh, okay. Um, because I, I, I want to reconnect with, with the fan portion of myself. I feel like when you get injured, you kind of become the bitter vet and you get a nasty taste in your mouth for the business, for what it didn't do for you, brother, brother, and what, what it, what it, what it, how it hurt you. Like, no, I, I love this as a fan. I love the talents. Uh, you know, the Haven, um, I have a great story about them. I love those kids. Definitely a team I want to team up with. Um, for my own per personal selfish reasons, I just want to team up Damon. Um, you know, stuff like that. Um, and just, you know, so many companies around popping up. Uh, BCW looks interesting. Mm -hmm. um, NWX, I think it is. NWWX. The one from New Hampshire. NWWE. No, yeah, NWB, thank you. I'm sorry, I always think of extreme as an X. I don't know why. There's not even an X. It's before that. <laughs> My literate self. All right. That looks like a great company. I would love to uh, re debut in because I had a mini debut, but just before my injury and COVID. So I did a battle royal, and then that's it. <laughs> okay. So it's definitely something I want to re debut in. Nice. Um, and just, you know, get back into the Bronx, wrestle somewhere in New York again, back mm -hmm. to. Like I said, just so much stuff. I, I'm looking because I'm a study of the game. I'm a study of the business. I'm a study of what works, what doesn't. Why do people do stuff? I'm a king of the why. Like, I love to know why. Why you did this? Hey, Slick, when you wrestled this match, why did you make this decision in the middle of the match to go for this move when clearly you had to win? Like, just all that why. You know what I mean? You know, so um, definitely can't wait to come back. Definitely can't wait to see where this health journey takes me to. Um, I've definitely been on the more healthier life kicks. Um, uh, got rid of red meat. Um, I only eat white meat now. And that sounds very offensive. Listen, <laughs> ladies, I'm all colors. I, I just don't eat white meat. Um, uh, so, you know, healthier kick, a lot of vegetables, a lot of, you know, protein shakes and, and lifting weights. You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah. Summer should be uh, interesting. That's all I gotta say. Thank, thank you so much for sharing uh, a part of your life with us. Uh, we weren't aware of, um, and I, again, I can't wait to see where your journey takes you because wrestling is a big question mark. You never know where you're gonna go. You never know who you're gonna fight. You never know what kind of um, almost. You never know what kind of pride. Just that little bit more. You know that little bit extra from. Just putting on a solid performance, it, it, it hits you here, and you're like, you know what? That came out pretty damn good. Uh, so I can't wait to see where all of this venture takes you, my friend. Thank you. Absolutely. Can't wait to see you there. <laughs> uh, what a fine conversation we had with the return of one Nathaniel Carr. Uh, it's been a I fine... I mean, it wasn't as long as Ryan Frost or Dan the Man's interview, but I mean, it's a decent <laughs> amount of time. Are you trying to rush I, see these people? He's already trying to rush me off the off the phone, off, off the Skype because he wants to keep it short. But he gave people three hours and two fifty. He talks with dogs. Just saying, just saying. Well, Dan the man, I had no choice. 
uh, Ryan Frost. I, I almost started no... this interview with with, with, the, with the Funko Pop. Just to mess with you. I almost did it. And I talked myself out of it. I was going to make you stare at a doll for, for a minute and just to mess with you, but I, I talked myself out of it. Uh, the one with Ryan Frost, I mean, holy cow. I don't even know how we, we just got into all sorts of stuff. I, I don't even know how, but I was famous. Well, Ryan has so a... much beautiful history behind him. He started mm. at PWA. He, he became Frost. Came, you know, the, the the infamous Ryan Frost. He was cutting these amazing promos with um, Just Incredible and these these legends of ECW times. You know, he like it's a beautiful journey. So I'm not surprised you got three hours out of him. It's mm-hmm. such a short journey. He's done. He packed, packed it with so much, and he's already he's pretty like what seventy years old too. So I mean, he's he lived a lot of life. <laughs> you know. Uh, <laughs> All right. We did, we did. I, I said too many nice things about Ryan. I had to take a couple of shots. <laughs> uh, we did speak upon uh, some of the talent that he's gone against in his short career. And it it's almost like you step back and you're like, son of a bitch, you did do that. Like, holy cow, you know? Um, he, I know that didn't really happen, but you have to one day ask him about the classic ECW vintage poster his mom found for him and bought him. Because I pointed out to him that he's wrestled 90% of that card of that night already. He's been in the ring with those people. Oh, wow. There's Shane, there's Justin, there's a few other people that's like, oh, crap, I've worked with them somehow at some point already. Yeah. And they're all on his flyer. <laughs> what? You know what I mean? So that's another fun little random fact. I'm gonna stop putting Ryan over. Talk about him. Let's talk about Ryan Frost more. I talk about Dan the Man. This is ridiculous. <laughs> Pineapple. I uh, and, and, and so, to kind of. Next, I'm gonna start talking about Al Jabroni. Goodness gracious. Well, I mean, you were talking about Ouija boards and bringing my man back. I mean, I, I'm all. Oh, no, I'm all about that's it. That's definitely a plan. I, I got the Necronomicon. I'm gonna bring him back. Gonna, okay, please, please. I, I'm looking for him. Uh, still looking for him. Hashtag. Oh, you five dollars. That's what you want to bring him back. I need my five dollars. <laughs> yeah, if anybody wants to join, not a, not that anybody has ever joined me because who who wants to? Uh, hashtag, where in the world is El Jabroni? If you if you want to put a post up, if you've had a sighting, you can have a Carmen San Diego. <laughs> yeah, and 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 you can look this up on on the on the old face page. Hashtag, where in the world is El Jabroni? You'll see all of my ridiculousness. Uh, wait, there is actually one more person that was uh, on that. Where in the world is El Jabroni uh, trained? So I uh, checked out. He, yeah, he, he, he was looking for. No, 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 not sign guy. It was somebody else, some random. I have no clue. He was looking at for him in Niagara Falls, actually. What? Well, yeah. He's going south. He's not going north. He can't handle ah. the cold weather. I, I, I'm just saying that's where he was looking. Again, a random. If you hashtag where in the world is El Jabroni on the face page, you'll see the said footage. Um, but again, my reasoning for maybe bringing it to a tail end is I, I left work and came home and hit the old record button. My stomach, it needs supplement, my man. I'm a skinny person. Yeah, so your stomach always needs supplement, dude. You, I always worry about you. I worry about you. I really do. I'm going to bring, I'm start bringing I, you sandwiches to shows. Just here's an egg sandwich. Don't eat. Oh, from wow. A, from I, a gas station. Oh, never mind. No. <laughs> I, 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 I mean, if. If you wanted to bring some homemade egg salad sandwiches for moi, I would be so loving and, and accepting. Don't put Bro, celery. I'm Puerto Rican. I'm bringing you a plate of, of Spanish food. What are you talking about? It's about oh. pork shoulder and Spanish rice and, and ensalada. Oh. And all that. Like, my Puerto Rican kicks in when I cook, man. This is why I'm so big now. I can't make small portions. <laughs> I'm not built that way. <laughs> I, I, I think there is a roast that has been done out there. So I'm, I'm going oh. on and some of that. Yes. Yeah, enjoy. I'm gonna go yes. eat. I'm gonna go eat my kale salad and um, oh. chicken sausages. Oh, that, that sounds absolutely horrible. You have a blast with that. Uh, this is concerned to pop with Don Kincaid and my very special guest Nathaniel P. Carr. Thank you so much for spending the time with us, the fans tonight, my man. My pleasure. Miss you guys. <laughs>